What is CAR T cell persistence? One of the issues with um, CAR T cell therapy is that you infuse the CAR T cells and then you sort of leave them alone. And we know that they expand after you give them. They proliferate in the blood and they reach their peak at slightly different times. A BECMA, which has been approved, um, reaches its peak earlier on than um, the SILTA cell, for which the data has been published in the Lancet earlier this year, uh, where you see a peak in, in proliferation or an expansion at about three weeks or one month after infusion, so a little bit later than the abecma. Uh, another important question is, is the persistence of CAR T cells, because over time there's a tendency of, of um, concentrations of these T cells in the blood to diminish. And so in, in most patients, it becomes ha much harder uh, or impossible to detect them after, um, after a couple of months. Uh, importantly, it is not fully understood and, and as, uh, as CAR-T becomes publicly available uh, also earlier on, it's an important thing to study is whether or not this persistence correlates to the duration of response. Because a naive interpretation could be to say that when we cannot detect a CAR-T, it's not effective anymore. Um, but I think it's slightly more complicated because we expect the CAR T's to have their effect where the tumor is growing in the bone marrow and not necessarily in the peripheral blood. So it's possible that there's very low levels of the CAR T cells actually uh, persisting uh, in the bone marrow niche where the tumor is kept under control even though it's no longer detectable in the blood. Um, I also have to add that there's like a, a very large variability in the persistence in the sense that there are some patients in which we see high levels of CAR T cells persist up to three, six months and longer, whereas in, I would say, most patients we see uh, lower or undetectable levels after a couple months uh, or a couple months after the infusion.